everyone, um, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, my name's Bronte, uh, and today we're going to talk about knitting. <laughs> um, let me just put this tea down, it feels precarious. Uh, I have a spearmint and apple tea, which I rather like in the afternoon. Um, so yeah, uh, knitting. I haven't done a knitting update in a, in a little while. So I thought that's what we'd do. Um, yeah, uh, I've got some, a, f a couple of finished things, not tons, um, and some works in progress and some acquisitions. The acquisitions might look a bit like <laughs> intense um, because I haven't done an acquisitions update for quite a long time. Shall we start? <laughs> um, I have some notes in my Hobonichi weeks. So yeah, <laughs> um, the notes are going to go here so I can remember what to talk about. Um, um, so I've got some socks, but what I'll talk about first is the Port Sweater by Ozetta. So here it is. Um, this was a test knit uh, that I did in December and I love it. I finished it on Boxing Day. Um, it's such a nice pattern, um, it's got, there's a seam here, um, yeah, Hayley, Azetta, um, Hayley's patterns are fantastic, there's so many short rows in here, like, through to build up all the shoulders and everything, and, um, they're just, I don't know, they fit great and they're really enjoyable to knit, um, yeah. I, re I really love this. It's, it's I've worn it a lot because it's been cold here and um, it's quite a chunky sweater in a way. Uh, so this is knitted on a 5.5 millimetre needle um, and I knitted it with Dererum Natura Gilead in the colour Aster held with Gepard Kid Silk in the colour they call Thunder. I can't remember the number. Um, they have number codes and names. Um, yeah, I love it. I'm really pleased with the colour as well. I don't have anything this colour, but I think it's it's good kind of neutral in a way. Um, so yeah, that's the port sweater. Also, um, I w I'll make a list of the patterns in, in the description, so with links to Ravelry, so you can find them as well. Um, so that's that. Uh, I've gotten a, yeah, I think I've said it, I've gotten a lot of wear out of it, um, I really love it, and it was lovely to test knit for Hayley again, um, because I did the Lakes Pullover test knit as well, um, and I'm planning another Lakes Pullover at some point later this year. Um, I have some uh, leftovers I want to use and I want to do a stripey one, which I think could be really cool. Um, the other thing I'm debating is that all there's all short rows here in the lakes pullover. I don't know how that would work with the stripes. Um, I think I'll, I'll try and swatch it to see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then what I will do is um, I'll kind of colour block the top uh, to the underarm. And then the rest of it I'll do striped, you know, stripy sleeves and yeah. Um, and I think that would also work equally as well. And then it takes the head out, headache out of trying to do short rows and stripes at the same time. So that's that. Um, okay, let's put this to one side. Um, and then I got really obsessed with socks <laughs> over Christmas. Um, so when I went home for Christmas to my parents' house, I took my port sweater, but I knew that I would finish it. I think I only had one sleeve to do um, when I uh, went home for Christmas, so I, you know, I knew that I would finish it. And actually, I took less jumpers with me than I would normally because I knew I would have that one to wear at some point during the week that I was there. So yeah. Um, so that's to say that when I went home, I took sock wool with me because um, I thought it would be just like a good project, and it was. I took this self-striping sock wool that I've had for ages. Uh, I got this from 
beautiful knitters which is a knitting shop in London um it's the brand Hjertgarn spelled h-j apologies for my pronunciation I'm sure it's crap um <laughs> And also now I'm holding these like up, oh, they look tiny, but I, I promise you these fit my feet. I have small feet <laughs> um, and I like quite a, a relatively short sock as well. Um, yeah, so I made these um, and I made the first sock in like a day or two, which is really fast for me to knit a pair of socks or knit a sock, sorry. Um, so yeah, which one did I do first? This was my first one. <laughs> sorry, I took a sec. Um, yeah, so... I knit it was knitting this on Christmas Day when we were watching films. Um, because we always, you know, we have I'm sure as lots of people do, you know, you have your like Christmas film viewing. So we watched uh we watched a Sean Sheep film, which was at my dad's request because he loves the Ardman films. And then we watched um we watched Prey, the new Predator film on Disney Plus. And then also on Disney Plus, we watched The Banshees of Inner Sharon. Um, so yeah, I sat for ages, you know, for like, how long is that? Like five and a half, six hours? Five and a half hours watching watching films and knitting. So I think through that viewing, I managed to knit all down to the heel and then turn the heel as well. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty good. And this yarn was really fun to knit because it just, it changes so I was like "Ooh, you know what's coming next what's coming next and I think I, once I'd knitted these I realized mm, I think that's the thing that I can crack for uh like having fun with sock knitting is using stripe self-striping yarn because I've actually I've never used it before so yeah I made these and then um also at Christmas I cast on for the um reverie sock i've written it wrong in my notes but it's reverie sock which is from issue 41 of pom pom um i did these as a preview knit and then i'm making them again so here's the first one with these little bobbles so cute um so this is knitted in leftover big little yarn co in the color tamago and the pink is a uh, Labby and May that I've put into loads of other socks. Um, I realised that I was not going to have enough of the Labby and May for the second sock if I did the toe in it, so I did the toe in yellow. And I wasn't sure about it at first, but now I actually like it. So yeah, as long as they match like above my boots, <laughs> this part, as long as that part matches, I don't mind. I think I'm going to. Uh, potentially have enough to do just the contrast in the cuff area and then the rest of it I'll have to use a different contrast color um so yeah I'm trying to decide whether to do it in because it's pinky but it's also kind of lilac-y so I'm trying to decide whether to do it in a pink or a lilac because I have pink but I would have to buy some lilac so anyway I've gotten I'm onto the I'm on the bubble section of the second sock because I cast on another pair of socks. So the bubble section, I'm like part of the way through a row, so I didn't want to like pick it up and show you on here. Um, but yeah, I am I'm down to here on the second sock of this. Um, <clears throat> and then I have another pair of socks to show you. So I finished, you know, I was knitting these socks at Christmas and I finished them and I got kind of, I was really enthusiastic about the self-striping thing um and so i ordered some self-striping sock wools um i'll show you the other two but i've got a pair of socks here um so i ordered three balls of sock wool um i would normally buy my yarn from work because i work in a knitting shop if you don't know um but we don't actually have any of this self-striping yarn at the shop we used to sell it um but we don't anymore. Um, so I ordered some stuff online, which I haven't done for a really long time, um, but it was exciting. So I got a Regia one, which is these, which I like that they don't match. They do match, but they don't match, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, and I forgot to say this pattern and this pattern are, <laughs> I've already forgotten what I was gonna say. <laughs> the pattern is, a summer Lee pattern it's a free pattern and I would 
always recommend it to people for like first pair of socks it's got it's cuffed down turned heel um and i find that these socks fit me really well um it's really straightforward i basically have it memorized so yeah um that's good what's the pattern called i didn't say i'm so basic that's what it's called <laughs> um because it's just a really basic sock pattern i've done lots of pairs of these i think um maybe i've done maybe almost five five or six pairs yeah five or six pairs probably um so this is an a reggio colorway um it's an arnie and carlos one um i feel like it was called like autumn nights or something i just i don't know i really like the colors in it it came out bluer than i expected but i i like it so yes that's these um so that's two pairs of socks since last time well two and a half pairs of socks since last time we spoke you know did one of these videos um which is fun uh i've really enjoyed wearing them i got a new pair of boots for christmas i got some blundstones for christmas and discovered that they are amazing with hand knitted socks so um that's why i'm trying to add to my hand knitted sock collection so that's my finished things um i suppose the reverie socks don't necessarily count as finished because only one is finished but i'm putting it in my finished category <laughs> um so then we can talk about works in progress um all of the whips that works in progress that i have mentioned in probably in my last knitting update are still whips um the stalactite sweater um a test knit that i've actually never finished um which i will i'm going to rip it out i will explain that later um and the stephen west shawl i think i'll also rip that out um and the Mm -mm. what's it called the stripe overload polo oh this one's coming out um the stripe overload polo which i'm doing in one color all of those are still whips um i'm gonna rip out the stalactite i know you all told me that it was really nice and that i should keep it but i'm just not enthusiastic about the project anymore it's not that i don't like the pattern because i really like the pattern um i really like the yarn i'm just like I'm sick of looking at it to be honest and I'm I'm just I just don't think I'm gonna pick it up again so and also that was one of those projects that I cast on and on a bit of a whim and those are the things that tend to um that I just like tend to not like very much um because I have some stuff that I like cast on on a whim that I have finished and I don't wear because it was not a necessarily like a carefully considered decision so that's something to think about for this year um no spur of the moment cast-ons unless it's a sock like whatever that doesn't matter <laughs> um no spur of the moment garments to be cast on i think that's a pretty good rule yeah so those are all whips i'm not going to show you them because you've already seen them um apart from the test knit but I still can't show it to you <laughs> um, because the pattern's still not out. Um, I have one new whip, um, which is the Mina No Sweater. This is by Noriko Ichikawa um, and I am knitting it in uh, Retrosaria Vovo. So I've got one of the, this is the yarn label. Look at this freaking yarn label. <laughs> Vovo means, um, it says on the label, it means grandma in Portuguese. Amazing. How amazing. <laughs> so I've always loved this yarn label. Um, yeah, so I am using Vovo. I've never knitted with Vovo before. And if you've watched my other knitting videos, you know I'm a really big fan of Rose's yarns. But for some reason, Vovo, I've, I've never knitted with. But I'm now knitting with it. This is the colour 03, which is like a petrol blue. Um, and it looks so nice. I'm so pleased. So yesterday I divided for the body and sleeves. So I've literally just gotten like 
hardly any of the body done but that's fine i'm making um a fairly like oversized size so there's quite a lot of stitches over my needles um but i'm really enjoying this um i think yeah at work we were talking about like the the kind of not benefit it's that's not the right word the kind of um almost like the joy of a simple pattern something like almost like the port sweater as well something that's like really thoughtfully designed and is incredibly easy to wear um those things are the things that i tend to get you know you get the most wear out of those things i do anyway i have lots of color work things that i've knitted for myself and i love those things but I don't know, I feel like there's been a bit of a shift in what I am interested in knitting recently. So I'm, I'm trying to knit things that are going to be more like kind of like wardrobe staples rather than something that's a bit of a not, I was going to say flamboyant, not flamboyant because I'm not, I'm not a flamboyant person. Something that's maybe a bit more, um, what's the word? I think I mean just like something that's a bit more mm, fussy but not fussy I don't I can't think of the right word I just basically mean like <laughs> things like this that it's beautiful it's like a beautiful sweater it's simple it's gonna go with all of my clothes it's gonna be easy for me to wear like I can throw it on over my pajamas which is something I really love to do <laughs> um you know having knitwear you can wear with like your cozy clothes your, your like pajamas or your loungewear or whatever I think that's very nice um yes so that's kind of um what I want to focus on with my knitting this year socks for sure because they're very practical and because I've got new boots and stuff I yeah I'm, I'm kind of trying to prioritize making socks and then making some more basics for myself so um that brings us to some acquisitions oh no wait no it doesn't <laughs> i have a sock um i i had so from my pair of socks i'm a uk size four in shoes um i made these a bit longer because my blundstone boots sit higher than my dr martin boots um but i have enough yarn to make another pair of socks with contrast heels and toes so um this is one sock this is sock number one um and I, for the heels and toe and the cuff, I'm using Retrosario Mondim in this really beautiful colorway that I think is 203. No, it's not 203. Look it up on Rose's website. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so I wound this into a cake. It normally comes in, in a, a mechanically wound ball like this, but um, I found these quite hard to pull from, from Project Bags, so this was, I wound this into a cake. Um, yes, so also using up leftovers, this is what I want to do as well. I um, put together a basket of sock yarns that sits next to the sofa. Um, so I just kind of want to be grabbing stuff from there for socks all year. So, yes, that's that. Let's put this back in here. I'm using my, um, my... 2023 Hobonichi gift bag as a project bag and it's so good for a project bag. Perfect for a sock. That's that. Let's drink some tea. Hmm? Coaster's stuck. I just noticed there's a really big crack in this cup that I absolutely adore. I um I need to get another one. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some acquisitions. Um okay, I'll show you the sock yarns first. So I got the Regia and then I got these two at the same time. These are West Structure Spinners Signature 4 Ply um, and they have like solid colours in this range and then they have a, a range of printed colours. I've always wanted to knit with this wool and I have not. So this year is the year. Um, the red is called Robin and this one is Blue Tit. So the colourways are kind of based on and British birds, which is very nice. Um, I think these will be very fun. And because they're um, 400 meters, like with the Regia, I think I'm gonna have enough to make a pair that are solid and then a pair 
with contrast heel toe cuff situation so that's fun so that's those um and then um i got last year i got um a sweaters quantity of jc rennie super soft ball ply this color is called blaze um it's like a really rich orange red like a tomato red i don't have anything in this sort of red um i got this to make the dagian 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 pullover from pom poms winter issue i'll put a picture up so you can see it um yeah i i sometimes do a little bit of work at pom pom like helping out with um shipping out magazines um and i got to try on the sample that is photographed in the issue because they had it at their studio and it fit me so perfectly it was ridiculous like it could have i could have made it for myself that's how well it fitted me um the sleeves were perfect it was just it was amazing so i really want to knit the sample size that's in the issue and um yeah i will i will make it exactly like it is in the pattern which i don't normally i don't do that because <laughs> i'm small i have to make everything shorter um but yes that's but that's this we this is a new yarn that we got at work um uh, november last year um it's beautiful it's really soft and um it's all milled in scotland in a mill that's like 300 years old which is lovely um so yeah this is the yarn the pattern uses i think i've got a swatch knocking around on my desk somewhere oh here it is i did swatch for dagian so this is my swatch uh those little bubbles so cute so i will be knitting that this year or you know soonish um i think it's uh it's a really nice pattern it's just and the the yarn's very lightweight it's it's thinner than a four ply so um i think my sweater is going to use about 300 grams of wool which is very nice um and that's in the fifth size too i'm not making like size one or two i'm gonna make size five so yeah that's great that's for dagian and then i got from work i got some of this this kind of like funky bobbin um this is dalana rustica this is a hundred percent wool from spanish from spanish a <laughs> hundred percent spanish wool from spain blur um I've really wanted to knit with this for ages as well and I just haven't found the right project. So this is a worsted weight, um, it's a single ply, it knits up well on bigger needles as well. I've swatched it for the shop on a 6mm needle and it looks really good just on its own because it puffs up a lot when you when you block it. Um, I'm going to be holding this together with sorry, a Mondim which I already have in my stash um, to make a texture vest by Helga Isiger. I'll put the picture up. Um, yeah, I really love that pattern and I think this is perfect. Again, it's not going to use much wool, which is very nice. I got four of the Delana and I have two of the Mondim, but I'm, there's no way I'm going to use both of the Mondims. So that's that. And then, last but not least, I got a sweaters quantity of Rao Work original so this is the one the raw work that is on the label it's called double knitting but really it's more of a it's more of a worsted weight um it's much more comfortable it's much happier and it's at a worsted weight gauge and um, this is the undyed color called quartz it's very 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 pale gray and if you've watched some of my other videos if you follow me on instagram you might think bronte that color looks familiar don't you have haven't you knitted with that before Yes, friends, I have knitted with this before. This is the colour that I used for my cameo vest by Orlan Souche that I test knitted um, at the end of the summer last year. I'll put a picture up if you haven't seen it. Um, it's a gorgeous pattern. Um, I used this colour for my cameo and 
I am now going to use it to make a Zakuri cardigan by Noriko Ichikawa. She's the designer of the Mina No sweater that I'm making and her newest pattern, the Zakuri cardigan, I'll put the picture, is so good. Like it again, you know, like I'm talking about, it's a really good basic. So I'm going to make that in this row work. The row work is quite woolly and it wears well, it doesn't pill very much. Um, I think I got five of these. Yeah, I think I will have gotten five. Um, it's quite an oversized cardigan. Um, so that is that. Um, I would quite like to say uh, a little like PSA with this yarn stuff. All the yarn that I get from the shop where I work, uh, I get a great perk as an employee where I get like a yarn allowance as part of my as part of working there so um yeah i i haven't i haven't bought this wool um but i would buy this wool <laughs> because it's so great but i just wanted to say that like if you're thinking oh god bronte spends a lot of money on yarn i'm very lucky in that i get this as part of my job um so i just wanted to put that out there um yeah, my boss is wonderful, amazing. I love her um, and is incredibly, incredibly generous. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, yeah, what else? I've got some more notes. Sorry, I was just looking at my notes. I've got two notes. I have a sweater's quantity of Retrosaria Mondim in a bottle green, which I'm going to use for a piece of silver by Verval Mackey. I've talked about that in a previous video, which I will link in the cards so you can have a look as well. Um, I think I talked about that in my stash video, which if you like this video, maybe you should go watch my stash video too. Um, it's kind of slightly like out of date now because some of the stuff I've knitted because uh, I filmed it a while ago, but you know, might still be of interest. Um, I'm hoping to knit that piece of silver sweater. Not maybe I'll knit it over the summer because it's quite you know it's fine it'll be easier to it's not like I'm lugging around a giant sweater's worth of stuff um when it's hot and then the last thing I want to talk about is the Paul Clay sweater by Midori Hiros I will put a picture up um I was literally so obsessive about waiting for this pattern I remember she, Midori put up like a picture on her Instagram of the yoke when she'd knitted the yoke and I fell in love instantly. Her colours are incredible. It's it's like one of the most unbelievably amazing knitting patterns I've ever seen, honestly. But when the pattern came out and I realised that the yoke used 18, 1, 8, 18 separate colours, I just... I was like, I was overfaced. <laughs> I couldn't believe that like, that was how many colors went into it. And I kind of like, I don't know. I just like decided that I was gonna put that idea to one side. However, I've decided um, I really want to make a Paul Clay sweater. It's not so much in the realms of what I was just talking about with like basics and um, things being a bit more simple. But I think I want to, what's that? Oh, some straw from some yarn. <laughs> um, I think I want to make an exception for this sweater. I'm thinking this will be the only color work sweater I make in 2023. Um, so I have some Jameson's, Jameson and Smith Shetland, it's the, their two ply um, in a very, very dark charcoal gray. Wait, let me get it, it's under my desk. Okay, here's the colour. Um, it's colour 81? 81 charcoal. Um, it's so charcoal, it's almost black, but it's got kind of like grey flex, or like grey, I don't know, it's got little light, bits of lighter grey in it. Um, I have enough of this colour um, that is gonna be ripped out from a, that test knit I mentioned. Um, 
to use for the body of the Paul Clay. And I think obviously like this is such a great blank canvas, isn't it? So I need to raid my stash to look for more colours. I've also seen that um, some of the samples for the sweater have, instead of like different colours all the way through the yoke, um, they're done in like blocks. So it's like two and two and two and two, or like one, 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 one. Does that make sense? Like alternating between two colours. And then the next row is two different colours. So it's, and then, but then it goes back to the first two. Um, I'll put a picture up, I'm not very, describing it very well. Um, so that would only use four colours for the yoke. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. It seems a shame because it's so stunning to do it with all of the different colours. I will see. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking if it's 18 then. Well, I'm not going to do maths on camera. <laughs> um, but I may be able to reduce the number of colours, you know. Maybe I could do it with six colours instead of... Um, or like eight colours. Um, yeah. That is, that's your lot. Um, thank you so much for watching this rambly video. Um, uh, what, what am I going to do next week? Next week is a um, flip through of my Hobonichi cousin, all of my January pages, um, which I'm really excited to share. Um, I've just, I've, I love that, that, that book so much. Um, I'm really, really excited to uh have more of these books to be able to look back on um yeah i i like looking back on the pages i've already done like whilst i'm still in the book if that makes sense like i've been looking back at my pages from earlier in the month and thinking oh yeah i remember that day like i don't know there's lots of things that i write down in there that i wouldn't remember otherwise so yes that is that's next week um Thank you so much for watching everybody um as always if you have questions or you want to know something or we want you know you want to ask me something i mean um please leave me a comment um it's nice to chat to you all down there in the comments um and i will see you next week for the hobonichi video so yes thank you so much everyone bye